obviously Amanda Nunes is, is the name in, in the female uh, division at the UFC. Fought before with Shevchenko, but do you reckon there's that trilogy fight after 239? Yeah, well, listen, I, I was saying at the press conference the other day, you have, you know, she's, she's facing Holly Holm now, another one of the greats that she's never fought before, and then what she really wants is, is a, uh, a rematch with Cyborg. And, you know, Cyborg, I said that the other night, and Cyborg goes crazy and whatever. Uh, you know, we offered her that fight, and Cyborg turned it down, you know? And uh, I don't blame her for turning it down. I'm not saying anything negative about her. Um, you know, Nunez is a beast, man. She's the best. She's the best female fighter ever. She looks unbelievable um, and just keeps getting better every time she fights, and she's one of the best fighters in the world. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm excited to see her, her, her and Holly. Do you think that with... with Rousey as well, you'd argue they're the two biggest ever. Rousey, the, the status that she gave to the sport, obviously the, the, the size of her star right. was incredible and, and the impact she had in the sport was incredible, but you think Nunez is the greatest ever? Oh yeah, one, one doubt. Look at, look at who she's beat. Knock Cyborg out in the first round. Ronda, Misha Tate. Now she's headed in to fight Holly. She beat Shevchenko. Yeah, without a doubt, the greatest female fighter ever and one of the best fighters ever, period. Not just female or male. How long does it go on for? You keep lining them up, she keeps knocking them down. Yeah, yeah, she, and you know what? She's got a great attitude and just all, you know, a really happy, genuinely good person, man. I, I love working with her. So her, her future, do you see her getting many more fights in 2019? Do you think it will be 239 and then another one before the end of the year? Yeah, so she, you know, she's got this fight with Holly. She wants to rematch with Cyborg. I don't know if Cyborg's going to do it or not. If she doesn't, then we'll figure out what's next for her. Talking of 239 and greatest ever fighters, one of the greatest ever, if not the greatest ever male fighter, John Jones, also there. Um, do you reckon he's the greatest ever? John Jones? Yeah, definitely. Comfortably. If you look at what he's done, who he's beat, how long he's done it for, he's never been beat. That one on his record is a referee that should have never been in the octagon refereeing. Um, then he beat Daniel Cormier twice. Nobody's beat Daniel Cormier except for John Jones. And I hate to put it this way, but if you look at what he was doing in his personal life, at the time that he was winning these fights, it makes it even crazier how talented and how good the guy really is. You think it's a sign of him being more talented rather than... 100%. 100%. I mean, yes. I, I don't even want to get into it, but yes, yes. It's even more impressive. <laughs> so you say I don't want to get into it. I suppose you've spoken about it a lot. Yeah. Years, well, right? it's just, you, know, you know, the thing is, is that it's, 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 it's negative. You know what I mean? I don't want to be negative when we're talking about that the guy is the greatest ever, but it's hard to talk about him being the greatest ever and not talk about what he was doing at the time when he was beating the best fighters on the planet, um, which I think, like we just said, just, just makes it even more impressive. That Cormier fight, there's got to be a trilogy fight there as well. And there's, surely there's money in that that can't be turned down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th that's, that's a fight that must happen. Um, and it's a fight I think that they both want. What, what weight division do you reckon it would be at? That's a good question. That, that, will be, um, that, that would be the, the question. Do they fight at heavyweight? Or the, listen, if I'm John Jones... I make him come back to me again at 205. You know, if I'm Cormier, I, I want that fight at heavyweight, but I know Cormier will want it at 205 because that's where he'll want to beat him too. So Tiago Santos coming, in a, uh, coming up in a couple of weeks. Knockout artist, on a hot streak, potential, potential slip up. You could, be, you could be the best fighter ever, but knockout artists are the ones you want to dodge really because it can end like that, can't it? Yeah, you know, Santos is, is an absolute beast. And what I love about this matchup stylistically is how big he is. You know what I mean? If you think about the trouble that Jones had with Gustafsson, Gustafsson was a big guy. And uh, Tiago's big, powerful, well-rounded. And, uh, you know, I think he, uh, he causes a lot of problems for Jones. Do you see that John Jones would ever allow a, a big shot to happen? Because everything seems to come so in his stride throughout his career. He's so composed and he's so dominant. Do you, do you see that at some point there will just be a shock? Santos, 
a big fighter, a big knockout artist, right. like we've said, but still the underdog very much. Right. So. Well, if you look at some of John Jones' fights in the past, guys who have powerful knockout punching power have clipped John Jones before, and his chin is held up to the test. I mean, that guy uh, is durable. I think there were a lot of questions about John Jones because he was always so dominant over other fighters. It wasn't until we saw the first Gustafsson fight where he got into deep water and you really saw what John Jones was made of. Um, he, he just, you know, the guy's just so freakishly good, talented, and does have the heart and the determination to win and to be the best, um, which makes it, you know, almost impossible to beat the guy. How many questions are there left to be answered by John Jones? How many, how many doubts can people still have? Yeah, I, I don't think there's many. I don't think there's many doubts about John Jones. The, the, the big question about John Jones that people have is, when will John Jones beat John Jones again? You know, the only one that can take John Jones down is himself. So hopefully he can keep his personal life together and uh, continue his reign of terror uh, you know, in the UFC and go down as, as the legend that he is. One of the, uh, one of the light heavyweights and then someone making his light heavyweight debut, uh, Luke Rockhold, is stepping up. Do you think he'll be heading for John Jones sooner rather than later? Yeah, there's a couple of guys. Luke Rockhold and uh, <clears throat> Chris Weidman is talking about moving up to light heavyweight. So it would be interesting to see what they both can do if they don't have to cut weight Bigger, stronger. Um, I'm interested. Another big fight on the card, stack card, obviously. But Masvidal, Askren, and you must be excited, rubbing your hands together for that one, because there's a there's a bit of bad blood there, isn't there? Those two don't like each other. Yeah, no. Well, listen, Ben Askren has come in from day one, and and uh, you know tried to make pretty much everybody not like him, <laughs> you know, uh, in his division. So he's been fun, though. He's been fun to have here, and uh, I'm excited for that fight. Him and Masvidal will be fun. Yeah, they definitely don't like each other, and um, stylistically, it's an interesting matchup because if Masvidal can stay on his feet, Askren's in big trouble. If Askren can get him down, Masvidal's in big trouble. Masvidal's a funny one as well because he's got everything – that it takes to be a huge star. But it took a little while for him to light the touch paper, maybe, and, and really take off. But that knockout of Till in UFC London, and, and then also the backstage yeah. <laughs> backstage bust up with Leon right. Edwards, it's kind of shot him maybe to where he belongs. Why do you think it took him so long? I always thought that Masvidal, not only, you know, his personality um, is funny and, you know, he absolutely has what it takes to be a star, but I, I think his, his fighting abilities too. I mean, the guy's so talented, and it seems like he never took it serious until recently. Like recently, he's really taking his career serious. So um, I don't know what turned him around or you know what happened, but I like it. I'm glad to see it. Because I, when I first saw Masvidal fight, I was like, wow, this, this guy's really good. And, and I thought that, that, that he could be a world champion someday. And he just sort of, you know, he wasn't all here, if you know what I mean. Um, and now it seems like he's, you know, he's reborn again and, you know, wants to, wants to win. How much in your eyes did that big, big sort of blockbuster knockout of Darren Till in his own country, how much did that catapult him up the ratings, in your opinion? Oh, it was huge. You know, obviously we think very highly of Till. And for him to go in and, and, and knock Till out the way that he did was uh, massive for his career. Mm. And, and the winner of this, uh, between Askren and Masvidal, will they be getting a, a title shot straight away, do you reckon, or will uh, Colby Covington have something to say about that? Yeah, I mean, Colby Covington is, is in line. Uh, but like I said, guys who just sit around and wait for title shots, I've seen it go bad many, many times. Because um, you never know what's going to happen.